the problem of oversight of intelligence agencies is a very hard one in democracies. Uh, if we accept that there is some information that governments can legitimately withhold from the public, as most of us do, uh, then we have competing values. Uh, we have the value of self-defense against the critical value of self-government. Uh, and sometimes those values are both at their highest in the same situations. If you think about, for example, war, that's where the government's interest in secrecy might be at a higher level, but it's also where the public's right to know is at its highest level. Uh, so this is a serious problem. In the United States, we have set up mechanisms that are supposed to negotiate between those two competing values. Uh, we have a court system that gives secret surveillance orders. We have committees in our Congress that are specialized intelligence review committees. Um, and these are the oversight entities that are supposed to stand in for the public when it comes to balancing these values. And I think anybody who says that this overnight oversight structure has been a success um, has had his head in the sand. Um, uh, in fact, it was a miserable failure um, for, for many of the last several decades. Uh, that is until at least Edward Snowden uh, came along and dramatically brought the public into this conversation. So for example, for the Snowden revelations, when we try to use the court system to challenge the legality and constitutionality of NSA surveillance, we were thrown out of court uh, and told that the subject matter was too secret to be litigated in our courts uh, and that we didn't have legal standing to pursue these claims. Um, you've seen over and over on television, um, the top intelligence officials in the US government baldly lying in Congress about what kind of collection they were doing, uh, and members of Congress who knew they were lying failing to correct that. This was the system um, that was set up to do this job. Um, and, and the reason why we know that it failed is that as soon as the public was brought into this discussion, as soon as Edward Snowden went around those mechanisms to journalists and the journalists communicated to the public, um, all three branches of the American government have changed course. Uh, that these programs as they existed have not survived public scrutiny. So we now, we now see the legality of these programs being litigated in court rather than being thrown out of courts. We now see Congress uh, in the United States debating for the first time in 50 years, curtailing uh, the authority of intelligence agencies to conduct surveillance. Uh, and even the president of the United States has said that some of these programs were indefensible and need to be ended. None of that would have happened if the system had been allowed to run its course. So one way of thinking about oversight um, is instead of seeing whistleblowers and the media uh, as an alternative to oversight, we should conceptualize them as being a critical part of oversight. Uh, that, that without aggressive investigative journalists and without some courageous insiders who are willing to risk their liberty to inform the public, um, the system actually wouldn't work. Um, and that's one of the real ironies of the Snowden revelation, is that this person who dramatically broke the law, uh, in fact, revitalized the, the oversight mechanisms that his detractors are claiming um, he should have used.